The next part of the animation view that we're going to look at is the properties view on the left hand side. At the top of the properties view we have two selection boxes. The first one identifies what object we have selected inside of the scene. So we have the camera selected, we'll see that we have main camera. If we have a box selected, we've got the cube. To the right of the selection we have our animation clip. These are the actual animation clips that are loaded up on the object. If we left click on it, we can see that we have a list option where if we had multiple animation clips we could see those and select through them and work with them. And we also have the create new clip. So if we want to create a new clip to work with, we can create it right here. Below that, we have our actual properties view. And this is just as it states. This is how we view the properties on the object. And these properties are the, the parts of the object that we can actually animate. And you can see here that we have our transform. We have things such as our color. We could go in and do animations on the color and change the color through time with an animation. Now, below the properties, we have two other selection boxes. The one on the left is simply a display mode. This allows us to view the information inside of our properties view a little bit differently. Right now we're viewing all of the different properties of our cube. If we want to isolate out some of that information, then we can actually, instead of having show all, we can actually just do animated. And by animated, it's only going to show us information about the properties that have animations applied to it. It limits the view. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. There's times where you may have a lot of information and you really want to isolate it down to just the parts and pieces you're working with. Next to that, we have our wrap mode. And our wrap mode is basically allowing us to choose how we want to play out our animation. The first one is the default. It just continues to cycle through the animation. The next one is once. Once is just going to allow us to play it just once and it stops the animation. We can loop the animation. We can ping pong the animation so that we can go front to back and then back to front. And then we can also clamp the animation. We'll leave it on our default setting. And the last part of our properties view that we actually want to look at is right here. We see some little colors and we see some little dashes right in here. This is going to be our key indicator. This allows us to know whether or not we have a keyframe set on a part of our animation when we actually move our keyframe line across our timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and click inside of my timeline. And when I do, you'll notice the diamond. And the diamond, if we look back up here on our toolbar, we see that diamond was our keyframe, where we added a keyframe. Over here we can also see the diamond, and we see the diamond in here. This just represents that there's a keyframe in place. If we were to scrub over just a little bit on the timeline, we can see that it changes back to a dash, simply to let us know that there's no keyframe at this point in time. Next to that, we have a properties text box and inside of here we can actually type in a specific number if we want. This is just simply telling us where is my object in space right now at position X. So if we were to look at our position X and our transform for our object in the inspector we see 3.24 and so on and 3.2 and so on. So it's the same information it's just simply giving me that information here so that if I want to for instance let's say we want to move the keyframe to position 5 on the x-axis and let's say position 5 on the z-axis. I now have it at 5 and 5 in the world coordinate. If we go up here to our transform, our position is at 5 and at 5. So it's a great way to access this information and to view the information um, without having to use or work with the inspector.